Hey everyone, I got a real quick one for you today. This is a tutorial on how to make a pumpkin carving knife. So growing up we had pumpkin carving knives like this that my dad had made, and really they've been the only decent tool I've ever used for carving pumpkins. So what we have here is a saw blade, this one's from a reciprocating saw, with a plastic handle They make yourself, you just mold it on there. And they're way sharper than anything you buy specifically for carving pumpkins. So you gotta be careful about that, but they're much more effective, they're more ergonomic, and it's really easy to do. So I'm just gonna show you how to make these. So you can use a big blade from a reciprocating saw. You're gonna wanna stick to blades for wood cutting or with fewer teeth. Or if you want fine details, you can use a blade from a jigsaw. And they don't have to be new blades. Uh, this one's new, that one's old. Doesn't really matter that much, you're just carving a pumpkin. So the way we're gonna do this is using something called friendly plastic or moldable plastic. I bought this kind from Polyplastics through Amazon. 10 ounces was about $12. They also sell these color pellets, also for $12 for the set. Not as impressed with these, but we'll show you how it's done. So what I have here is two tablespoons of the pellets with some of the little color inside. We're just gonna add this to hot water. And what this does is it melts in the hot water and you pull it out and you can mold it uh, in your hands while it's still hot into any shape you want. Uh, so we're gonna get that going. I uh, heated this up in the microwave. Uh, so we're gonna set that aside for a second and let that heat up. It takes a minute or two. And I can tell you more about this. So this is the instruction booklet that came with the jug. So kind of wish the instructions were printed on it just because who's gonna keep a booklet like this? Basically, you heat it up with hot water, or you can heat it up with other ways, like heat gun. You pull it out, and you mold it by hand. It's not that complicated. For color, you can use the pellets they sell, or you can have paint or alcoholic inks, like it says, or you can paint it after it's done. I wish I'd known there's other ways to pigment it, because these plastic coloring pellets are just not impressing me. But then it gives some hints, such as using cookie cutters. I'm not sure how to use them, based on the consistency of the thing. And they have ideas for what you can do with it, props, decorations. Hardware, not sure how strong it is to hold up. Favorite here is the dragon. It's a really great dragon, can't you tell? I can totally see it. Can't you see it? Yeah, I can't see it. I don't know what that is. So they kind of did this weird black on black thing and it's just hard to tell what some of these things are. Oh, even good for healthcare. You can heal your broken arm, your broken finger, I guess. Either way, it's a really interesting material. You just keep in the hot water, you wait for it to get clear. Give it a little stir. It'll kind of start to clump together. It's about halfway there. And they come with a little chart for the color pellets to tell you what color you get based on how many of the little pellets you put in there. And the pellets are tiny and difficult to work with in terms of you're just counting out these little grains of rice. So you can kind of see they're not consistently sized and they don't, they're not even all apart and you're just supposed to, I guess, break this apart and count them. But it's really just a little bit of pigment in plastic. But for $12, I guess it will go a long way, but it's not that much. Honestly, when I, I thought I was just ordering different colors of plastic so I could just make it in that color of plastic, I ended up having to buy the pellets separate from the pigment because I didn't know what I was buying. So in order to get sort of a smooth color out of this, I was going for a lime green here, you pretty much have to heat it up and melt it and work it like taffy and then heat it up and melt it and work it like taffy again as it cools down. You gotta do that two or three or four times. It takes a long time just to get the color smooth. It doesn't like to mix in. So I'm not sure, I don't, I don't think that's worth it for this project because really what you're looking for is just a handle on a blade, they can use cover pumpkin. So it doesn't matter that much what color it ends up being. I got red and blue mixed in here. We're gonna try to make a purple. So it looks like this tur is turning clear. It's almost there. So let's pull this out, use some tongs. The water's hot, but hopefully not too hot. And it's, yeah, it's a little warm to the touch, but you know, you can touch it. And then you just kind of just start squishing it and working it. Try to get the water out of it. The water will just sort of form bubbles in there. You know, you just squeeze the water out. Okay, it looks like it's not totally melted yet. You see, as you squish it, there's still these little plastic balls in there. Uh, so let's put that back in there and let that heat up some more. If you had a bigger thing of hot water, it'd melt a little bit better just because there's more heat to a bigger mass of water compared to the plastic that's in there. 
One of the good things is it really doesn't take that much of this plastic to make a handle. So two tablespoons is what I'm using right now. So 10 ounces, it doesn't seem like that much. It's kind of not, but for this kind of thing, it'll go a long way. Another advantage compared to something like Sugru or something is it doesn't dry out. It's just plastic pellets you melt and you can remelt it. So when I'm tired of having a handle on this blade, the blade goes bad, whatever, I can just break off the handle, melt it again, mold it into a new handle, use it for some other project. It really doesn't matter. You can just reuse this stuff. So somebody who does a project and then a year or two later, I want to pick it back up again and do a second project. The material is still going to be good. It's not just going to rot away on my shelf. It's getting closer. Not quite there yet. And you're going to want to keep it flat when you're melting it, not just one big lump. But you want a lot of surface area so it melts faster. It'll still melt. I'm just impatient. Uh, so as soon as you start squeezing it together and you put it back in there to melt it again, you're just going to want to flatten it out and that's going to save you some time. Okay, there we go. Let's uh, get that water off of there. You can see it's pretty much see-through, so it's good to start molding. I will say this stuff is pretty fun to play with. It feels almost exactly like Silly Putty, which is a lot of fun, at least while it's warm. And you get about maybe a minute or so, mess around with it. You can see the color pellet likes marble around, but you got it a few times to mix it. So anyways, when it's time to make the knife, put the blade right on in there. You just roll it into a nice handle shape. I like to kind of just squeeze my fist so it sort of has the imprints of my fingers there. I actually want that lined up with the blade, not around it. I want a couple inches coming out of the end. That's as much as you can get inside the handle of the blade itself. And then you can just sort of put it together like that. If you don't quite get the shape you want, you can heat it back up with a heat gun or in the water gun like it was starting to cool when I was starting to turn it into a handle shape, so it's a little flaky. See that? So all I gotta do is put it back into the hot water and give that another minute to melt, and we can sort of touch it up. So after about another 30 seconds or so, it got a lot softer, just because it was already mostly up to temperature. Getting that into a half decent handle shape. Put as much effort into it as you want. It doesn't need to look pretty, because really, you just need a way to hold this blade without hurting yourself. Uh, you're going to want to have more plastic in front of the blade than behind it, just to kind of increase the distance between the blade and the plastic, and kind of a screwdriver handle almost. But yeah, that's really all you need. And then let that cool, give about five minutes or so, and then you have it. Okay, so it's been a few minutes to cool. You can see that as the plastic cools off, it turns back into this whitish color, and that if you don't put in the work to mix the color pellet, uh, that's that's what it looks like. When you do put the work in, you can get it smooth. It just takes time, and for this, it doesn't matter what it looks like we're carving a pumpkin. So, let's see how we did. Got myself my tiny pumpkin. Got myself the big one. Just shoved in there cut out a lid for this pumpkin. Just like that. Make a huge mess on my workbench. Use this little scroll saw blade and it's really easy to control and maneuver. And you can just get any kind of fine detail that you want. And the only limitation is your imagination and my ability to hold a tiny round pumpkin on a hard board. Really, it's just slipping through this thing and cutting like butter. Well, butter that needs a serrated knife. This is not a test of my artistic ability. Little face. Get my little nose. Yep, that's kind of a nose. So anyways, that's my pumpkin. That's the pumpkin carving knife. 
that's that's about all you need to know. Remember to clean the pumpkin off of this because these are tool blades. They will rust if you don't keep them clean. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Let's go.